What is going on YouTube? Patrick here. I'm at a Savers. This was on a Sunday and uh, decided to go after church this day. I had gone uh, to do some other stuff on Saturday. So Amber suggested that I go and check out Savers, see what I could find. Found a couple of pretty interesting things. I uh, decided to conclude the entire walk into the store this time because I headed over to this video game section and found at least something over here. Going to intersperse some live audio with my voiceover again as I've been doing lately. That's interesting. We'll see. Probably not. So I did decide to pick that up. Not a bad pickup for just a couple dollars. Should be able to get like 13, 14, 15 dollars free shipping. Not bad at all. Cricket. How much do they want? Fifteen dollars. What cricket is it? It's an interesting one. Cricket expression. That is what's in there. Maybe like sixty bucks. Maybe forty. I think it's going to be a yes. Turn me the two. Hermetics. I want six bucks. And then we've got the chin machine. So, of course, I did end up picking up the cricket. I had to go get myself a cart. And uh, yeah, headed over to the uh, kitchen items over here. There were some really interesting little, like, I don't know, kitchen countertop oven things up on top there. And they had the box and they were really reasonably priced. I, have, I did check the comps on them and they were selling, I don't know, 60, 70, $80. I was really excited about them. Um, but, <clears throat> excuse me, then I checked them out. And of course, both of them were broken. So put them back, started walking down the aisle here and uh, something on there caught my eye, you guys, immediately. So went down here to check it out. Oh my gosh, it's a space saver. Oh my shit. What is it? Which one is it? It's a can opener. <laughs> Holy cow. So yeah, that made this whole trip worthwhile. I mean, the cricket was already a good pickup. You can see the comp there. That's that's not just a comp. That is the sold price for that because I have already sold it for that amount since last Sunday. Yeah, sold super fast. Always like to find these. Haven't found them very often. Uh, I think this is the third one I have found. Uh, and both of them, two of them have been brand new actually, like this one was. I, I listed it as new open box just because it looked like it was brand new. It looked like it had never been used. All the parts were in there, so it had never been installed. It had to be new. My guess was that somebody had opened it up here in the store, taken it out, and then put it all back in there. For some reason, didn't buy it, which doesn't make any sense to me since it's worth a ton of money. Uh, I took a look at the rest of the appliances here, but of course, I'm still kind of riding high from finding that space space maker, space saver. I can't remember what it is, <laughs> which one it is. Uh, but yeah, looking for some other things that I might be able to sell on eBay or on Facebook Marketplace, things like that and uh, found, looked up a couple more things but didn't end up buying anything else this day. I headed around the corner to this shelf where they've been putting a lot of random stuff lately, you guys. Just, you saw those two like massagers that are there and then there's a fish tank there, there's a toilet seat cover there, magazine rack, right? This such random stuff. There was this, uh, there was a Corningware sitting there and then this steamer thing. I just You gotta just check everything, right? It's kind of the way we work. Just always looking at stuff. I did kind of notice this. It looked kind of nice. Anyway. 
honestly, I try to just go based on brands when it comes to that kind of stuff. And that one, I don't know, maybe it would have been worth it, maybe not. I just didn't feel like it was going to be. I, this Glacier Bay fixture over here and also this uh, this jigsaw kind of thing, both of them caught my eye though and they looked like they were much more interesting. So I headed over here to check them out instead. So yeah, I ended up leaving both of these things behind. Uh, the Probably the Glacier Bay may have been worth something if it was in a little bit better condition. Like I said, it was kind of gross. Uh, the other thing just really didn't have a lot of value, surprisingly. Sometimes your gut's wrong on this stuff. Uh, but yeah, always check stuff out if you have an inkling that it may be good. More of these? Somebody donated a ton. Yeah. I have been constantly finding those Temptations products here in this Savers lately. Um, I, I've done okay on a couple of them in the past, but I've also done bad when I've gotten home and found cracks in them. And they're not really worth a ton. I would say that one, the one I picked up was, was for sale for like $9, and that's about what it's worth. Maybe you can get 10 to 15 for it on a good day. Uh, but right, that's, they're kind of pricing you out of profit there. Harry Potter? It's like twelve dollars. You may want two bucks for it. I don't know. It's just not that great. I didn't see that one. Nordic. I want six bucks for it. So if you've been watching my channel at all in the past, you know I love Nordic Wear. Uh, that one was not bad, worth about fifteen to twenty dollars, and they wanted six bucks for it. And definitely, I was going to have a uh, twenty percent off, right? So that always helps as well. So I headed next over to the toys, and uh, there's a nice little bag of them sitting right there on the shelf that filled with some interesting stuff. So I put a comp up there. That guy there with the green vest is actually from Small Soldiers, which some of those guys can be worth a lot. And then the other guy in the bag is from Thundercats, it's Mumra. Uh, it was the newer line of those toys. And then there was what I thought was gonna be a G.I. Joe also in there. He ended up being a third party G.I. Joe. Uh, so really, realistically not worth anything, which I thought I had found three, toy, three good toys in one bag, which that would have been awesome, right? <laughs> but not to be. I also checked out the Sony. I didn't know why it was in the toy section. I thought maybe somebody picked it up and then set it down and forgot about it. So I, I comped it and yeah, worth about what you'd expect, worth about $10. <laughs> the toy shelves, you can tell, do have a lot of stuff on them. So I do try to just dig through a lot of it. You never know what you're gonna find. Uh, sometimes you can find some pretty good stuff buried under what looks like a bunch of, a bunch of nonsense, right? Uh, not a ton, ton, ton here this day. There, you can see there was like a Fisher Price uh, Arc set and Noah's Ark, I think, and that's only worth like five to ten dollars, even if it has all the figures, which that obviously didn't. There's maybe a Barbie car there. Some of those can be okay, uh, right? When you're in the store, you can see them, and they're usually beat up, broken, dirty. Lots of things for reasons just to leave it behind, because at the end of the day, right, you want stuff that's going to be good. I thought this was going to be an X, original Xbox, like uh, Halo controller. Uh, but it ended up being the GameStop version, which honestly, you guys, just does not have a ton of value. Uh, you might be able to get a little bit for it, but uh, you, want, you want the Xbox version, right? You don't want the GameStop version. <laughs> so definitely, it's, it's hard to see. It's hard for me to keep up with the camera sometimes. I always try to look at all the shelves. That remote control car that was up there looked pretty interesting. Honestly, I haven't done enough research on remote control cars to really know what I'm looking at half the time. I see some of the other YouTubers picking them up and finding some pretty good value in them, uh, but definitely I'm not going to be doing that until I, I do a little bit more research and do a little bit more understanding of what it is that I should be looking for and how much they're worth. So that's about it for the, the hard toys over here. I'm going to head over to the bags next. Uh, I've been spending a little bit more time looking through 
the stuffed animals or plush. I feel like it's funny. People always ask at garage sales, like, well, how much is your plush? And to, to people not using jargon, they don't know what plush is. <laughs> it's going to be the stuffed animals. How much are your stuffed animals? So I always think it's funny when I see some of the other tubers, how much is your plush? It's like the people are like, what's plush? <laughs> But lately, I've been watching a few other YouTubers pick up some stuff and trying to learn like what to look for. The ones that have really been standing out have been uh, VeggieTales. So take a look at, at VeggieTales. Some of those can be good. I saw that toy there. There was a Thor toy. He was big, like 8 to 10 inches. I definitely was interested in him, but he was broken. His helmet definitely had one of his wings missing. Uh, so not going to pick up broken toys. You never know. Sometimes even with a broken part, they can still be good money. Um, but you can see these pegs, not super full. I picked up this bag of toys because I thought I saw a couple Star Wars figures in there. They ended up being, I think, um, one of the G.I. Joe alternates that's out there. I don't remember what they're called off the top of my head, but definitely looked like Star Wars figures. And surprisingly, some if you can get Star Wars figures, even the newer ones, and put them in a bundle, a lot of times they can do really well. So I'm usually on the lookout for them if I can get a bunch of them in one bundle. My next stop was up here to the case. At first I thought I'd seen some, some really interesting stuff in there because there's all those baseball card boxes until I realized that these were all like really, really mass produced stuff from a couple of them are late 80s. The stuff on the right is 88 and then there's some early 1990s score. And honestly, you guys just no value there. What I was thinking about as I was editing this was that's maybe like a, a new reseller's um, mistake, right? Just waiting to happen. Someone's going to buy these things thinking that they're worth a good amount of money and they sure look like they are, but honestly, they're not. Um, I've heard a couple other people recently like criticizing people for doing comps while you're either at a garage sale or you're at the thrift store, but I mean, it is a tool and it's at our disposal. It's at our fingertips. So I don't mind using that while I'm out doing stuff. I don't mind checking prices on things. Even when I'm at a, uh, a garage sale, I'll, I'll be happy to do it. And someone says, hey, what are you doing? I mean, like, I'm just going to check the reviews, right? Something like that, something innocuous. Or maybe I'm going to say, like, I'm just looking at it online to see what it was supposed to come with, make sure it's complete, right? There's always some reason to be looking this up online. And I sometimes I'll even tell them I'm checking eBay. <laughs> People always think that's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> so obviously now I'm looking at the books. You haven't seen me pull anything out and put it in my cart. There were actually a couple Harry Potter books in here this day. But of course, uh, if it's paperbacks, all I've been finding is the first couple. And if it's, the, if it's a hardcover, I'm only finding like five, six, and seven lately. And it's the opposite of those that are the, the valuable ones, right? If you, you're looking for the hardcovers, you wanna look for one, two, and three. Those are the harder to find. And then if you're looking for the paperbacks, you're looking for five, six, and seven. Seven is super rare in my mind. I have only found that one a couple of times. Uh, you can definitely put full sets of them together in, in both cases, right? Either hardcover or paperback, or you can do a combination of them. And they sell actually pretty well both ways. Um, what I found is if you have all paperback or all hardcover, you're going to do a lot better though. Over here, I was looking at those Dilbert books and the Far Side books that were down there. I think if I had found these at a garage sale, I would have bought them. I uh, probably would have done pretty well with them. But of course they want, I think $2.99, $3.99, something like that. Just not going to be enough left for profit there. My next stop was the mugs. I'm constantly looking through these things. It has been a hard couple of months with them. I have not found anything worth flipping in a while. Of course, last weekend I was at a different Savers and I found a couple Starbucks. One of them was really a good one and I accidentally deleted the footage of me finding them. So <laughs> you can just hear about it from me here. Uh, but yeah, got to be looking for the Starbucks. And of course, I'm always looking for Death Wish coffee. Still have not found one of those. I also do always check out all of the plates and stuff here. I don't think I've ever actually bought any, but you know, always looking for a pattern that looks old or vintage or just interesting. And right, obviously if it stands out, look it up. You can use Google Lens. I often use that to look up stuff. And uh, maybe one day I'll find uh, something worthwhile. Um, this is the like, I don't know, kitchen miscellaneous section. This is where I a lot of times will find cutting blocks. So I'm always looking for like a knife block, always looking for the, um, the Cutco knife blocks. Those can do pretty well. And I'm looking for a couple other things. Anything that looks interesting, right? 
Um, I heard recently that the star colanders, like very similar to the one right below me there, those can sell for like 10 to $15. So if you can get it cheap enough, it might be a worthwhile pickup. Um, right, of course, it's gonna be a really specific one, so don't just buy all the colanders out there. <laughs> I'm also looking for uh, blenders and blender accessories. A lot of times I'm gonna find Ninja stuff, right? Like I thought that, that milk frother that I just had in my hand might've been Ninja branded. I've done pretty well with the Ninja brand all of those different things, the, the choppers, the milk frothers, the coffee makers, the blenders, you name it. Like all that stuff does really well, especially if you part it out. This, this case here that I just picked up, it looked super interesting from the side. It looked like they were trying to replicate like a vintage Pyrex look, but it was so cheap feeling. Uh, yeah, it did not, did not stay in my hands for very long. It was really obviously nothing interesting. <laughs> Uh, let's see. So what else? I'm of course looking through here, looking for um, right. Some of the some of these these water bottles can be okay if you can find some really nice ones. It's gonna be really obvious, you guys. You pick it up, it's gonna feel like it's junk, like that one Mickey one I just picked up. Just felt cheap. You're looking for any of them that feel like they're quality. And thrift stores they may price some of them up. They know what the brands are too, of course. But always in, in just in case, they may they may slip through the cracks. That's kind of the fun thing of this. I also do always check out like the cookie jars and stuff. And I, this one just looked interesting. So I picked it up and kind of took a look. There was no brand on it. So I was like, eh, I'd probably not worth anything. And I put it back. So now I'm on my second sweep of the store. Here I am by the electronics. I figured I'd come over here and take a look at the pegs. And right, I'm also gonna take a look at the beauty products over here. Sometimes there's some stuff brand new in the, in the case. And uh, then all of a sudden I saw that camera case sitting back there. And I had said this earlier in the video that sometimes you find stuff that's hidden. Like, why isn't this in the electronics? Why isn't it hanging on a peg? It was in the beauty products. But hey, I was able to, to, to find it So because I just happened to be digging through some stuff. Um, not like the best camera in the world, but it is a little uh, Nikon 35 millimeter point and shoot. I'll pop a cop up here now. Uh, I did take a look in the store and uh, knew that it was selling for like 20, 25, $30, something like that. Uh, it was in pretty good shape. It's missing like the little piece of plastic that goes over the digital counter at the top, but I think it's still gonna be doing pretty good for me because it had the instruction manuals. And the one that was most recent on there that sold, that had the instruction manuals sold for a little bit more. So I think pretty good pickup. I think it was $3, so really not bad at all. So like I said, I was gonna take a look at the pegs. I saw that stereo down there, took a look at it. Uh, it was one of the ones that has a tape player. Like I usually just try to stay clear of those just because I've had so many of them be failures. On these pegs here, I'm gonna be looking for uh, good CD players. I'm looking for remote controls. I'm looking for calculators. I'm looking for uh, digital cameras. I'm looking, right, when it's digital cameras, I wanna get them where they're 12 megapixels or higher looking for good GPS units. And a lot of times it's pretty easy to tell when they're, when they're good because they'll be in good shape and maybe a little bit newer. <laughs> so that is gonna do it this week, you guys. Thank you for coming along with me on this thrift trip. I did take a quick look here at these golf clubs, but honestly, you guys, I almost never find anything good in the golf club section. I probably need to spend a little more time going through them maybe i don't know i just i always feel like i just take a look and they're all just kind of beat up and chipped and just not worth my time uh, but i did take a second stroll around the store i didn't find anything else uh so yeah there, there was about 300 dollars worth of stuff in my cart and somehow i ended up getting out of here for about 30 dollars, you guys which is crazy the uh the black and decker space maker uh can opener of course helped me out if you've enjoyed this video, please do smash that like button. And if you're interested in subscribing, I try to put out live thrifting every week and I do a what's sold video on every Wednesday. Once again, my name is Patrick and thank you very much.